Hi, I'm David Collins from Craig Valley Croquet Club and this session is to educate and teach players uh, new to the advantage scoring system which is going to be used in the North West Federation of Croquet Club Handicap League in 2023. Traditionally we use the extra strokes or turns or bisques as they're known but the clubs have voted for 2023 to go and, and use the advantage scoring system. The success will be reviewed at the AGM in November 2023 with a view to continuing or disbanding it for 2024 and beyond. League Rule 22 allows that there's 18 games per match or 16 by prior agreement of both captains where perhaps there may only be one loan or limited time availability on the loan. So traditionally and going forward, we're due to have one round of doubles and or four rounds of singles. If we go for a 16 game match, the score is scaled up to the equivalent 18 game result when entered in the league table. So, Advantage Golf, some basics you need to know. Well, it's introduced by Rule 21 of the 6th edition of, of the World Rules. So that in, in, introduces Advantage Play as an option to the current extra strokes way of scoring. It's a simple way for players of differing abilities to play each other using level play rules. So you play, I play, you play, I play, someone scores a hoop, and we carry on. So extra strokes are no longer used. Players start on the score anywhere between minus four and plus two. And dependent on how many you need, or irrespective of how many you need to score, it's the first to seven points wins the game. The maximum hoops you could run is 11 and the minimum is 5. And the key thing to stress, there are no time limits in this format. So where do you start with this starting score? Well, we have a, a table, a variation of table. There's 10 variations of score line, which can be anything from minus 4 to 2 to 0-0, nil -nil, or minus 2-1 minus one, two, so on and so forth. But we look at the stronger player's handicap. So if you're a strong player playing off two, and you're a weak player, or weaker player, playing off nine, you come across nine, across to two, the stronger player would start on minus three, the weaker player on two. Take that a little bit further, a stronger player is six, and they're playing a seven, six and a seven, the six would start on minus one, and the seven would start on zero. So the idea is there's no extra turns to cover hoops or clear away, it's you play, I play, minus one plays nil to start, and it's first to seven points is now. So the stronger player playing off six has to score eight hoops, whereas the the other chap has got to score seven as now. This table is, is vital um, when working out start scores. It's also very, very helpful to work out your start scores in advance of the match. So we recommend captains where possible exchange players' names, current handicaps and agreed start scores, maybe the night or two before the game, but certainly before the start of play, this is sorted out for the whole day. Doubles, if we're keeping the doubles, you halve the sum of the two handicaps added together with any halves rounded up. So quite simply, if you've got two sevens playing together, add them together 14, half it is seven, they play off seven. If you've got a six and a seven playing together, that's 13, half it's six and a half and round up so they'd also play off seven. So they'd start at nil-nil. The ma maximum handicap in the Northwest per player is 12. 
And there is no such thing anymore as a golden hoop, the 13th, because the deciding final hoop can range anything from 12, hoops 12 to 15, and we'll explain and show that in an example a little bit later on. So how many clips do I need? This is another table that should be printed off, laminated and be readily available for all your players. As you can see, if your starting score is 2, you will need 6 clips as normal, but you will put 2 onto what's known as an advantage post, which is a post towards hoop 1 off court, but clearly shows that you've got two positive scores and you have to carry four to run four more hoops before you run your seventh point to, to win the game. Similarly as now, if you start on nil, you carry six and you have to run six hoops to score six points, then run the seventh hoop to get your seventh point. So when you've run out of clips, your score is six. A further example, if you're on minus two to start, you need ten clips. Two of them you will put onto the centre peg to show that you are minus two. These pegs stay on the centre peg throughout. When you run a hoop, say it be hoop one, you put your first of your eight clips on hoop one. If then you're fortunate to run hoop two, you put your second clip on hoop two. So on and so forth, till so you've run out of eight clips, then you've got one more to score the seventh. So it's quite difficult initially to get your head around, but what if you use this table and stick to having your clips on show, what you're carrying, make sure you put the right ones on the advantage post or the centre peg, and then just run out of them and run one more hoop to win the game. Tips to keep an accurate score. Well, we said we place positive score clips on an advantage post, which is near hoop one. You can actually use a corner post if, it, if it's suitable to do so. But if I start on two, I will put two clips on the advantage post, carry the other four. Place any negative score clips onto the centre peg. So if I'm starting on minus two, I put two clips onto the centre peg, carry the rest of the clips with me. When I've run out of them, I've got one more to go. So it's important to agree the net total of starting scores. You add the positive clips off the advantage post and take away the negative clips off the centre peg to give a net figure. And I'll explain that in a bit more detail in a minute. Keep all other pigs, uh, pegs, pigs, pegs visible wherever possible on your clothing. Announce the start score before the first shot. After running a hoop, place a peg on the hoop and announce the score line, giving the stronger player's score first. So if I start on minus two and my opponent's on nil, and he runs the first, he or she runs the first hoop, we would say minus two, one. He would put, he or she would put a primary clip on the crown. If we're playing secondaries, we put the clips on the upright to aid visibility and reconcile wherever needed. So how do we reconcile the score during a game? Well, you can count the clips on the hoops in the usual way. So after five hoops, there could be three blue clips on show and two red clips on the five crowns. So blue has run three hoops, red has run two. The starting score was blue minus four and red two, which is a net of minus two. So for blue, you subtract the score that's on the number of clips on the centre peg. So three minus four that are on the centre peg, they're currently on minus one. For red, you add their number of clips on the advantage peg to their start score. So they have two on the advantage peg, they've scored two, so they're on four. So the score line after hoop five is blue minus one, 
red four. This equates to hoop, two hoops less than actually run, i.e. the net start score. We'll show this in a physical example a little bit later. So to recap on that, before play you add the next net start scores together. Minus 4 to 2 in that example is minus 2. That means your actual combined score is always 2 behind the number of hoops run. So as we've just shown, after 5 hoops, there was 3 blue clips to 2 red. So blue was minus 1, red was 4, which is 3 in total. And that's 2 behind the hoops actually run 5. If your combined score is plus one when you start, at hoop, well, at the starting corner, at corner one, you haven't run any hoops, but the score could be nil one. So you're one ahead of where you should be. After you've run the first hoop, it could be one one. So that adds up to two, and you've run one hoop, so on and so forth. If your starting score was minus 1 to 2, after 5 hoops, your, starting, your score would equal 6. So 2 could play 4, 1 plays 5, etc. And the nice one for most people, if you're minus 1 to 1, minus 2 to 2, or 0, 0, your net score is 0 when you're on corner 1. No adjustments are needed throughout, so after hoop 5, your scoreline will equal 5 as presently. As I say, we're going to show some visual examples at the end of this presentation. It's not easy to get your head round, but once you've got your head round and practice it, then it, it will become the norm, we hope. So, how do we record scores on our handicap card? Well, all official club Northwest Federation League and CA games must be entered on your handicap card as now. Because it's handicap, advantage handicap, it's plus or minus 10 points per game. There's no draw matches, so there's no nil points. So it's plus or minus each game. You use A for advantage in the game column, not H is presently for handicap golf or L for level play golf. And if your or your opponent's handicap are correct, over time you should expect to win and lose 50% of your games. So time considerations. Well, the GC 6th edition states that earlier rules on the same rule book do not apply to advantage play. Well, what, what do these rules 1.41, 1.45 uh, say? Well, they basically specify that an organising body, such as the North West Fed, can specify an alternative way of determining when a game ends, as they do now, or presently in, in handicap golf, there's time limits of 50 minutes per game, when you double banked, etc. But the, the rules for advantage mean that advantage games must be completed with one player scoring seven points in a 13 point game and there is no time limits. The league rule 6a also says that if a player does not complete a game then it's to be conceded. That's usually because of ill health etc. But the CA have put a clause in to say that if for some reason a game is terminated and we do not see any reason why this would be any game in the North West, then you can use a ratio on hoops run. So if I'm on minus four and I've scored four out of 11 hoops I need to win, my ratio is 0 0.363. And my opponent's only got five hoops to score and they've scored two when the game's halted they're on 0.4, so they would win on the ratio system. Or there's also a product system using hoops run times the opponent, your opponent's number of hoops to, to win. These ratios and products are explained and examples in more detail in the CA's 
slideshow on Advantage Golf, written by Ian Shaw, and it's on the CA website, which will show a link to that at the end of this session. So, this, this is, has been tried and tested elsewhere, the Advantage Golf system, and it was tried and tested in the Southern Federation. And their, their, their facts are, in 2019, the extra strokes were used with time limits, and the average number of hoops run per game was 11.4. In 2022, when they played Advantage games with no time limits, the average number of hoops total in the game 11.8. So very close to the number of actual hoops run, which suggests similar times to, to, to play games. But 19% of their games went to hoop 13, 18% went to hoop 14, and 4% went to hoop 15, which is the maximum number of hoops you can play in any game. So they're suggesting that to be comfortable, you allow 75 minutes per game, as a per round of games. So five rounds would take you approximately six hours, and four rounds would take you approximately five hours before you have your lunch break. But every player must remember to play with reasonable dispatch, and then four rounds is certainly manageable, and five rounds is probably manageable in the Northwest. So, in summary, we have to agree 18 or 16 game matches in advance. It would be nice from a personal point of view, I, I'm suggesting we start with 18 and see how it goes. And then maybe reduce down to 16 uh, over time. But no time limits, but you're estimating a 5pm finish and, and time to go home in an 18 game match. We suggest that you print and laminate copies of the table of starting scores and how many clips do I need, slides three and five, and circulate amongst all your players. And also show them this video. Agree game start scores in advance where possible and have plenty of scoring clips available and educate your players in how to keep score, in particular to announce and agree the score after each who played. So, in practical understanding, we will be shortly showing you some examples to complete this video. We ask that you share the YouTube videos with all your team players. And the next slide is a game help start score sheet, which we're going to use in the examples. But more importantly, practice in your club. Play advantage internally on club days or other days, do not leave the education until the very first league match. Okay, so we just mentioned the game help start sheet for Advantage Golf. So let's assume that you've printed off and used the table of starting scores. So you know you start score. Well, there's 10 variations, so if you're on nil-nil, as we're currently familiar with, you need six clips each. There's none go on the centre peg or advantage post. You carry six each on your jacket. Score line of everyone's at level is 6-6, six, six, and your deciding hoop is 13. So what's the difference? Well, if we're minus one to one, the net difference is still nil. One player needs eight, Second player needs six. One goes on the centre peg, one goes on the advantage, so your net score is still nil. One player carries seven, one carries five. Got to get rid of all seven hoops, sorry, all seven pegs, all five pegs. You end up with six, six is a score line. Deciding hoop is 13. So it goes on, but let's go down to a nil one score line. So your net score is plus one. You still need six clips each, but one, of, one puts it on the advantage post. So on your jacket, there's six and there's five, respectively. You still have to get rid of your six pegs and your five pegs to get to a six-six score line. So your deciding hoop then would be number 12. So on and so forth down. And the last example I'll show you is at minus two to one, Minus one is your next start score. 
you can't, you've got 10 clips needed and 6 clips, 2 on the centre peg, 1 on the advantage post, 8 on the jacket, 5 on, on the jacket, that means you have to run 8 hoops and 5 hoops to get to 6, 6, deciding hoop 14. The most it can be is hoop 15. Many, many games will finish before this stage. Obviously, not every game will go to a deciding hoop. So this is the maximum you will ever be at whatever score, 6-6 six, six, and a deciding hoop of 12, 13, 14 or 15. Again, we've got some practical examples to follow. So, now we come to the stage of the practical examples. We mentioned in slide 3 about your table of starting scores. This is a good reference point for some of these examples. Also, we mentioned how many clips do we need. You will see on, that, on the left hand column, your starting score can be anything from 2 to minus 4. The total number of clips you need can range from 6, 8, 10, 12, up to 14. Then there'll be so many to go on the advantage post, so many on the centre peg, and so many to carry. So, it's quite important that your club has provisions for things like six centre pegs on a suitable um, card or similar, and those six would go to a certain player starting on 0, 1 or 2. The maximum you can have is 14 and that would be for somebody starting on score, sh uh, on score minus 4. Okay, so this tabletop croquet set has been set up to show the example from slide 7. With slide 7, and basically we're using counters for pegs. So, and white for blue and black, red for red and yellow. So in that example, we said the starting score was blue, minus 4, and red, 2. So blue puts 4 pegs, got 14 pegs, puts 4 of them on the centre peg, has 10 to put on his jacket or her jacket. The red player gets six pegs, puts two on the advantage post, which is situated near corner uh, one, where the blue hoop is, hoop number one, and they carry four. So, the scenario as we explained, blue has to get rid of all their pegs, Red has to get rid of all their pegs. If that happens and they've not run the extra hoop to score seven points, then you're at a 6-6 six, six situation. But in the example, we talked about after hoop five. So let's do that. We said that uh, there would be three blue clips on. So blue runs hoop one, three, and five. And red runs hoops two and four. So we're after hoop five. The situation three blue stroke white clips, two red clips. The score line is blue minus one and red four. Why? Because red has got the two advantage hoops, pegs, plus the two they've scored. So they equal four. Blue is minus one. The three that are out, minus the four. So, collectively, minus one and four equals three. So they are two hoops behind what they've actually run. So the next score is three. They've run hoop 5. If red then runs hoop 6, the next score would still be, it would be 4 and the 2 behind the hoops run, which is 6. 
so on and so forth. So let's get to the scenario that white then comes strong. He runs 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. 12 run, uh, red runs 12, end of game. However, blue manages to run 12, you play 13 the same, 14 becomes the next hoop, and the final hoop is 15, which is hoop 1 again. So the way around is important. You do the 12 as normal, 13 as before, 14, then 15 to go through. Okay, so now we come to a more common scenario. That last example was the extreme of a very low handicap player playing quite a high handicap player, minus 4 to 2. A more common situation is when you get a 12 handicap player and a 12 or a, a, a 10 or an 11, a 10 handicap player and a 9 or an 8, an 8 player and a 6 example. The start score for all those games would be minus 1 to 0. So let's use that. The blue and black are on minus one. How many clips do they need? Referring to the previous chart, they need eight. So we've got eight white tokens or pegs, and the red carries six. So quite often, as a 12, 10, 11 handicapper, nine handicap, you'll, you'll nearly always have, very often, have six pe pegs to carry. Some will go on the advantage, sometimes you'll have them all on your jacket. But generally, advantage, and then a few on the jacket. Run out of them, one more to run to get to seven points. So the start score is minus one to nil. So the one on minus one puts their clip on the peg, because minus one has to run seven hoops to get to six. Run out of hoops, one more for seven. The player who's starting off zero is just like any other normal game. So let's say in this game, blue runs hoop one. Their minus one becomes nil. So the score is nil, nil. Why nil? One hoop run, minus one on the peg. So nil, nil. Red then runs hoop two. Score line becomes nil. 1 and we announce it as nil 1. Then let's say red runs number 3. Red is on 2, blue is on nil. We announce the score nil 2. We are one hoop behind all the way around in terms of we've run hoop 3, the next score is only 2. So then white comes good. White runs hoop 4. The score line is 1 to white and blue, 2 to 1, 2. Then they go in sequence for a little while. So red runs, we've got 3 red pegs, net 1, blue. 3 red but we announce a stronger player first, so this becomes two to three after six hoops. White then wins number seven, so that becomes three, three after seven. White runs eight, that becomes four, three after eight. Red runs nine, that becomes four, four after nine. Red runs 10, that becomes 4, 5 to red. Red runs 11, that becomes 4, 6 to red. Blue runs 12, that becomes 5, 6. White runs 13. That becomes 6-6. Six, six. All pegs gone. Their deciding hoop is hoop 14. Whoever wins that one wins the game. Okay, so one final scenario, and it happens quite a lot when people are familiar with a nil-nil start. 
Well, the same effect is minus 1 to 1, minus 2 to 2. What happens there is the net effect is nil, minus 2, 2 is nil, minus 1, 1 is nil, nil, nil is nil. So the actual number of hoops run will always equal the, the hoop number that you are. So after five hoops it will always be at nil, nil, uh, it will always be 3, 2, so on and so forth. Now this example is set up for a scoreline of minus 1, 1. So blue has got eight clips, pegs, they've got one on the centre peg, the advantage, uh, the, the, the other player has got six pegs, one on the advantage, because they've got five to score, plus the, the, the sixth hoop to get to seven points scored. The net effect throughout is zero. So, after hoop two, blue has run the first two, the net effect is one to one. So the, 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 we've run two hoops and the score line equals two. So on and so forth. Um, red then runs the next two. They are on three. Blue are on one. Because it's two minus one is one, three. So they've run four hoops and the score line equals four. So quite often the scenario is going to be that the actual hoop you've run equals your scoreline and that will make it a lot simpler and easier to understand for most players. So that concludes the practical examples. So quite a heavy topic to get your head around. Please watch this more than once. Get out there and practice on your own lawns. That's more important to self-teach. Hopefully this video will have been of use with the presentation, the various uh, slides, the various practical examples. There will be some links at the, uh, on, on, on this site here about the um, more information from the CA and other sources and we hope to see you at future videos.